Six days ago, it was Israel's Memorial Day, and they remembered their amazing victory and deliverance from their uh, enemies in 1948. That was offset, however, by the United Nations investigation led by Russia against Israel for their actions. Meanwhile, uh, according to the newspaper The Times of Israel, the destabilizing actions of Iran in the region were completely ignored. Although I am not a Jewish citizen, I have read much history and I would strong say that you should support Israel for three important reasons. First of all, they legitimately bought the land from their neighbors. Second of all, well, secondly, they have repeatedly defended that land against the onslaught of their enemies. And thirdly, it's the only solution to the modern problem in the Middle East. In his history, Israel, a concise history of a nation reborn, Daniel Gordas tells us that the Ottomans bought the empire, bought this land called Palestine or Israel in 1517. For hundreds of years, they owned it, yet did virtually nothing to develop it. Meanwhile, uh, the Zionist cause flourished in the late 1800s because of the great anti-Semitism in Europe. Many Jews began buying little pieces of land all throughout Israel. Much of this land was swamp ridden, void of inhabitants, and undeveloped. Yet they bought it at steep prices from the Arabs in an attempt to uh, alleviate the anti-Semitism of Europe. When asked about the wisdom of such a move, the Zionist cause said that no price could be too high to pay for the Holy Land, and that future generations would tell about the wisdom of such a move. However, now that they have developed the land, they remain under ruthless attack from their neighbors. The president of Iran said in 2005, anyone who recognizes Israel will burn in the fire of the Islamic nation's fury, while any Islamic leader who recognizes the Zionist regime means he is acknowledging the surrender and defeat of the Islamic world. And Chris McGreal and Ewan McCaskill writing for the newspaper The Guardian in 2010. So, having covered the, that they purchased this land, let us now go and examine their defense. In 1948, Israel became a nation, according to the United Nations official signing. They were immediately attacked by all of their neighbors. Egypt, Jordan, Syria, Iraq, all ganged up and tried to eradicate them off the map. Amazingly, however, they retained the land and even acquired the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Jordan broke the treaty, however, and deceitfully kept the West Bank. Israel then went and attacked Egypt. Uh, no, Egypt attacked Israel, sorry, in 1956, again in an attempt to eradicate Israel. However, this time Israel decided to use a defensive, offensive tactic, and they ended up invading the Sinai Peninsula in a defensive war. They, this they returned in 1982 in an effort for peace. Again, Israel was attacked in 1967, this time by all of their neighbors, in one of the greatest attempts to eradicate Israel yet. However, Israel amazingly defeated their, the whole Egyptian army in a matter of 180 minutes, and then they went on to defeat the rest of their enemies very quickly. The, because of such an amazing victory, they acquired the West Bank and the Golan Heights. The West Bank they kept because Jordan had this, this had been rightfully theirs. But the Golan Heights, they returned in 2009 to Syria in an attempt for peace again. Also, the Gaza Strip, they returned to the Palestinians in 2005, attempting peace. So as you can see, repeatedly, Israel's offered them uh, peace treaties and compromises in an attempt to bring about peace. In 1973, again, Egypt declared war on Israel, but they were thwarted. Since then, Hamas, located in the Palestinian Gaza Strip, and Hezbollah, located in Lebanon and Iran, has repeatedly attacked Israel, yet to no avail. So what should our solution then be? Well, at the very least, we should defend Israel's right to defend itself. Why would you attack a nation that is only defending itself repeatedly from its enemies? Ned Price, a U.S. spokesman at the State Department, stated that, quote, the U.S. condemns in the strongest terms the barrage of rockets fired into Israel. We also recognize Israel's legitimate right to defend itself and to defend its people and its territory. The Times of Israel by uh, Jacob Majid in uh, 2021. Meanwhile, the UN has provided a terrible example. Quote, the UN is overwhelmingly biased against the Jewish state. 
the General Assembly condemned Israel more than all other nations combined last year. And Israel is under more investigatory scrutiny than any other nation. Luke Tress writing again for the uh, Times of Israel. We should immediately adopt a pro-Israel policy and discern ulterior political and religious motives behind other countries who verbally and physically attack Israel. For the past 75 years, they have been amazingly successful and will be for our good, uh, for our good, for our nation, and for the world if we support Israel. There is no historical basis to attack Israel. What you can do is you can immediately start supporting politicians who support Israel. If you support freedom, a representative government, democracy, republicanism, if you support an entrepreneurial society, then you should support Israel.